Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have seen what is respiration, how respiration in plants occur and how respiration in various animals occur. So we are going to see how respiration in humans occur. We know that during respiration, we take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. So these oxygen is taken in through the nostrils. Now the nostrils have fine hair that lines the passage. Now these passage also have mucus that helps in this process. Now the air passing through the nostrils is very finely filtered so that there is no any extra material which goes in. That is the reason why we are asked to take in oxygen or breathe through our nostrils and not through our mouth. Now the air which is taken in through the nostrils are passed through the throat and then into the lungs. Now in the throat there are rings of cartilage which ensures that the throat or the trachea does not collapse. There are approximate 16 to 20 rings of cartilage. Now the trachea is in the throat and a little more downwards. Now these trachea expands or separates into the two lungs. Now the two lungs are left and right. Now the left lung is little bit smaller in size in comparison to the right one. This is because the left lung provides the space for the heart. Now these trachea divides into the lungs into the bronchi. Now these bronchi further divides into bronchioles. These bronchioles are further connected to the alveolar sacs. Now these alveolar sacs have alveoli which are richly supplied with blood. Now let's see how this process works. When we breathe in, uh, we lift our ribs which flattens our diaphragm. Now this diaphragm increases the chest cavity which in turn allows the lung to suck the air in which reaches to the expanded alveoli. Now the blood brings the carbon dioxide in the dissolved form to the alveoli from where the alveoli passes on the oxygen to the blood and takes in the carbon dioxide into it and from where it is released out. So it was a simple process you see but the lungs have some amount of residual volume in it so that the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide can't have a sufficient time for the exchange. Now if a simple human being will depend upon the diffusion process for the respiration process, it would take a very long time. So we need a medium and these mediums are blood. Now the oxygen is carried by the hemoglobin which have a high affinity for oxygen. The carbon dioxide has high affinity for blood so it is transported in the dissolved form. If hemoglobin was not present in our blood or the blood was not present for the transportation of oxygenated blood, it would take three years to travel the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the toes. So, so you see how important blood is for the transportation. We will be seeing the circulatory system in the humans and animals in the next video.